we love this time of year when we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and place special focus on the gift of his life. Our Ensign College Institute Choir and various student ensembles will favor us now with a special uh, musical Christmas program, including remarks by Sister Adams. We're very grateful to those who have dedicated so much time and preparation who will be sharing their talents with us today. I'd like to first introduce Sister Adams to you. Sister Sonia Adams was born in Zimbabwe, and after graduating from high school, she moved to South Africa, where she started working. Through the years, she's had various career opportunities, ranging from a relationship manager for a logistics company, regional sales manager for a pharmaceutical company, and director of sport at Redham House. Sister Adams later came to Ensign College, where she earned her Associate of Science degree in project management and global supply chain management and operations. She served as a counselor and president of the Relief Society and Young Women at both the ward and the stake level. She's especially enjoyed being able to teach her own children in seminary and institute, along with the young single adults of her area. She's been married to her husband, Brother Stephen Adams, for 32 years. They have four children and one granddaughter. Two sons and one daughter have also attended Ensign College. At the conclusion of our program, we will close by singing hymn number 213, The First Noel, and the congregation will join with the choir as directed by Brother Decker. The benediction will then be offered by Mateus Dominguez, a global supply chain management student from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. We will now turn the time to Brother Decker and the Ensign College Institute Choir. Hear him. President Russell M. Nelson has invited each of us to better listen to messages from God, our Savior, and the Spirit as they give us words of inspiration and revelation. Please join us for a short musical journey of listening to, seeking, responding to, and realizing the magnificence of the Savior.
At the Savior's birth and during his lifetime, those who had ears to hear responded by seeking him. Early, some found him in Bethlehem. Later, others found him preaching on a hillside or healing in the streets. Feeling of his true, feelings of his true followers varied in expression, but certainly were filled with joy. Oh. 
Hello, everybody. This has been an exciting journey to prepare some thoughts for you today. Um, I, I feel it's a privilege and a pleasure to do so. Um, I'd like to thank all my friends and colleagues that are here today. I'd like to thank my precious husband, who is my anchor in my life, and my precious son, who is sitting at the back so no one can see him. Um, <laughs> I'm so grateful for all of your support. Thank you. I'd like to thank the choir, obviously. What beautiful words. And I'm loath to, to like, ask them just to hesitate for a second for me. But uh, thank you, and thank you, Brother Decker. He uh, asked me what my thoughts were going to be about today. And I said to him, I keep getting the feeling that I need to speak about the star of Bethlehem. And so that carol that you've just heard um, is an introduction to this. So thank you. Thank you, President Cush, for this opportunity to share a few thoughts. Everybody knows how verbose I am, so I'm going to try and stick to 10 minutes. That has been allotted to me. So as we are here together today, we have several things in common. Last week, Elder Godoy asked you to raise your hands and highlighted some of those examples. But one I believe that we can be proud of is that we have somehow, at some stage in our lives, managed to navigate our way through a busy airport, right? Confusing bus route or city with crazy traffic. Some of us even managed to do it successfully without a GPS or a modern technology that we appreciate today. We actually used to use a map book. Strange but true. And the most difficult thing I'm sure people can relate was holding the map the right way to start, right? <laughs> that was the most challenging thing. I know you can't relate, but just imagine how awful that would be. I can relate, and I remember that oh too well. We moved to Cape Town in 2000, and I was given the opportunity to work in the pharmaceutical industry. And, and as it is, you need to go to doctor to doctor, pharmacy to pharmacy, and I had no idea where to go. So I remember sitting at night, pouring my heart and soul over this map book, and still getting lost the next day. But I knew what my destination was. And so, if we know what our destination is, we, it helps us in our lives. We knew our destinations because we had technology, signs, arrows, instructions, landmarks that became our guide. The wise men knew of the birth of the Savior because they saw a star in the east. That star became their guide. They found him because Heavenly Father had prepared for them a star, a new light in the heavens to guide them. They watched and searched and followed the star. The star within the heart of the wise men is something for your consideration and thought as well. After all, if the star was in the sky for all to see, then hundreds of thousands of people would have seen it and thousands of people could have wondered at its meaning, and hundreds could have followed it to the little town of Bethlehem. But the wise men saw it with the eye of faith. They followed it with hope and patience. They kneeled before the young child, Jesus. They had a star within that enabled them to see the star without. They saw it with the eyes of faith, and it brought them to the Savior. The star that led the wise men to the Savior was real, but it also was symbolic of the light that came into the world with the Savior's birth. The Savior is the light of the world. He is the sure guide for each of us. His light is the guide each one of us may have. The Savior's life and his teachings are like light that shines in a dark world. No doubt, Heavenly Father had many options for alerting the world to the birth of his Son. But in the end, he chose a most impressive sign for those who would look. God put in the darkness of night a physical and metaphorical declaration that the light of the world had arrived. 
how that star must have been caught, must have caught the attention of every person who chanced to glance at the sky. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 10, we read, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Today, with all the surrounding artificial light, many of us can hardly make out stars in the night sky. But in Jesus' time, everyone would have looked with familiarity toward the heavens when darkness fell. Thus, God chose light, one of the most evocative symbols, to represent his only begotten son. Christmas lights have become the modern and traditional symbol of Christmas. As we consider the miraculous appearance and operation of the Star of Bethlehem, it's interesting to ponder the fact that we consider miracles are often just divine operations. Functioning within established physical laws in ways we don't understand. Elder Neil A. Maxwell suggests that God knew about the need for an unusual heavenly phenomenon that would point out a location and would lead travelers to it. He had millennia to prepare that phenomenon to be in place at precisely the right time and when it, ne when it was needed. And so, by extension, if God has that much control, insight, and concern over physical events, how much more might he have interest in directing where and when we have opportunities to let our light shine for his purposes, to guide us as we navigate our way each day? If we are vessels of that light, we are then prepared to illuminate the landscape surrounding us and to lead others to him, warming them in the process. It's a beautiful analogy and a great reminder of our responsibility to let his light shine. The darker the times, the more important it is for lights to shine. And as the challenges in our world increase, and they will, there's no doubt that God's light is needed more than ever. His disciples are expected to be a light and not just another shadow. The star reminds us of Jesus' birth, of his kingship, of his divine nature. However, the star also reminds us of something we may gloss over in the Christmas story. Jesus' birth wasn't announced to those who would have expected. The host of angels didn't come to the head of priests of the leaders of the Jews. They appeared to the lonely shepherds. Likewise, the star didn't appear to the scholars and scribes of Jerusalem. Instead, it was shown to Gentile magi, outsiders who would have been scorned by devout Jews as pagans. The shepherds would come representing the poorest of men and their labors. Later, the wise men came from the east symbolizing the richest of men and their labors. The star reminds us that the gospel isn't just for the religious, for the neat and tidy. It is not only the poor shepherds of society that also the astrologers of this world, those foreign to us. The father announced his father's birth to the most unlikely candidates, showing his love for all of humanity. His desire for all to know him, the gospel is for everyone. And we have the honor and joy and the sacred duty to share it. I'd like to share the poem, A Christmas Star, by Tom Krauss with you. A bright Christmas star sits high on a tree, shining its light for the whole world to see, reminding us all a night long ago when a star in the sky guided wise men below to a small town stable where a gift from above was born on that night to bring the world love. The light from the star shone down on a child, asleep in the manger so meek and so mild. Shepherds and wise men who came to draw near then spread the good news that the Savior is here. Now the Christmas tree star still leads us today to the birth of a miracle that first Christmas day.
The wise men knew of the birth of the Saviour because they saw a star in the east. The star became their guide. They found him because Heavenly Father had prepared for them a star, a new light in the heavens to guide them. They watched and searched and followed the star. May we continue to navigate our lives each day, each moment, embracing the opportunity to have a star within, to see it with the eyes of faith and to be brought to Jesus. Everybody in this room are very special spirits of our Saviour Jesus Christ and of our Heavenly Father. I pray that we will look at a star and know that we can be a star. I pray that we can look at it and be so grateful that our Saviour Jesus Christ is the light of the world. That is my prayer for you and for me and for everybody that the gospel is for in the sacred and holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
We cannot celebrate the birth of our Savior without connecting his atoning sacrifice for each one of us. Without Christmas, there would be no Gethsemane. The reason for Gethsemane began with Christmas. Thank you. 